This is page 32. Slope review was 30. All right, you've got a couple of definitions to write down. You should know these step, these words, though. Um, an isosceles triangle is a triangle with, I'm abbreviating where I can, with two congruent sides. An equilateral triangle is a triangle with equilateral, equal sides. It means all three. The name itself is telling you it's a triangle with three congruent sides, which means all sides are congruent, right? So here's what that looks like. With an isosceles, I like to say, turn it like a rooftop because it's just the right, it's just two sides that are equal. So if you turn it like a rooftop, try your best to draw what looks like a nice, even triangle. It just has two congruent sides there. If it's equilateral, that means all three sides are equal. So it's kind of stretched out and it looks like a nice, perfect shape. Okay. The word scaling, what do you think? Mm, we're talking about in terms of congruent sides. What's the only other option now? We've covered two, we've covered three, none. A scaling triangle is a triangle with no congruent sides. None. Here's how you remember which word goes to which. First of all, equilateral. Lateral means side. Equa sounds like equal. So equal side. All three are equal. Isosceles, the way that I remember it is I see kind of like a little symmetry. I see a isosceles triangle there and there. I don't know why I visualize it because of the SOS and the ELE. Um, that's how I remember isosceles is two congruent sides. Can you turn that off? You don't mind. A um, couple of vocab words when we're talking about isosceles. Look right here. There's an isosceles triangle. Because it's turned like a rooftop, this would be called the base. The two sides that are equal would be called a leg and a leg. So an isosceles triangle has the congruent legs and you think of those as the right and the left side of the rooftop and then it has the base. There's one more vocab word and that describes, or two more, that describes this angle right here, this one in the top. Sorry, something touched. Since this is the very top, it's called the vertex angle. Vertex angle. The two angles on bottom, we have already discussed this. The bottom angles, the base angles of every isosceles triangle are always what? Congruent. Remember the day I said however many congruent sides are in a triangle? dictates the number of congruent angles. So if you have an isosceles triangle that's two congruent sides, that means there's two congruent angles. Where are they? If you'll turn it like a rooftop, they're always down here. We're going to say angle A and angle B are base angles. That's what they're called. And I want you to write, turn it like a rooftop. It will help. Now, you have two little theorems right here. We're not into proofs yet, 
So we will probably come back to this, but the idea is if I tell you that two sides of a tri triangle are congruent, then you can say, okay, well then there's two congruent angles. And then vice versa. If I say, hey, here's a triangle where there's two angles that are congruent, then you could say, okay, well then there must be two sides that are congruent. Okay, so that's what this is right here. This is going to come into uh, come into play when we start proofs, which is not right now. So we'll come back to that. All right, now let's talk about equilateral. An equilateral triangle is very boring because it's the same every time. What are the measures of the angles in an equilateral triangle? What do they have to be? They have to be the same. How many degrees are in a triangle total? We practice this like over and over. You should know this. What is it? 180. 180. So if they have to be the same, how would I get the measurement? Do 180 divided by 3. What's 180 divided by 3, y'all? 60. Right? Okay, so if a triangle is equilateral, then it is equiangular. Equiangular, which means all of the angles are equal. If the triangle is equiangular, then that means it's also equilateral. If it's equilateral, it's equal angles. If it's equal angular, it's equal sides. Okay, you with me? Now, what does 180 refer to with triangles, sides, or angles? Yeah, let's back up. Let's read. We'll just, I'm going to ignore that. Hey, so what does 180 degrees refer to in a triangle? Sides or angles? Angles. The clue is degrees, right? Please don't confuse 180 with the length of a side. It, it's never tied to a side length. Ever. It's only angles, okay? Um, and then it says, okay, so each angle of an equilateral triangle would then measure what? What do we say? 60 degrees. And we're going to say because 180 divided by 3 is 60. So if I ever throw you an equilateral triangle, and I say, what are the angle measurements? You good? Um, you should be able to say 60 every time. That's why they're boring. It's always 60. Now, the sides can be different. Not, not lengths, but different numbers. I'm saying, like, they could have different, you could have 10, 10, 10. You could have 12, 12, 12. But what are the angle measures? 60, 60, 60, 60, 60, 60, every time. All right, let's start practicing. These nine problems and the three on the back at the top to 12 are your independent practice assignment. I'm going to walk you through a couple of them, okay? Number one, the triangles below are isosceles. Solve for X. Is this already turned like a rooftop? So then, thank you. These would have to be congruent. So X is 48. Number two, is it turned like a rooftop here? No, it would help if you turn your paper so you can see what angles have to be congruent. It would be these two, correct? <coughs> so what's X? Number three. Is it turned like a rooftop? No. All right, turn the paper. Find the base angles and mark them congruent. Is 72 the answer? No, this one's different. When you turn it like a rooftop, you should find that your base angles are here and here, which means you need to mark this other angle now as what measure? 72. And then now you take what you've been taught about triangles they have to add up to what? The angles have to add up to 180. So you go to your calculator and you do 180 minus 72 minus 
72. And what do you get? 36. Look at number four. Base angles are what? What are the what's the value of the base angles here? X and X, right? Yeah. So you would come here and you'd say, okay, there's my base angles, which means this is X, this is X and X. Two ways to do this. Long way is to set it up. 74 plus X plus X has to equal 180. That's the long way. Please let me show you a technique. It's called the subtraction method, and it always yields smaller numbers, shorter equations, fewer steps. Take what you know it adds up to. 180. Subtract off what you already have. So 180 minus 74. Tell me what you get. 106. Make a note on your paper, like, okay, so these two left have to add to 106. And then look at the relationship. They have to be equal. So what do I do with the 106? Yeah, cut it in half. So you find x is equal to 3. All right, I'm going to jump to number 9. And then I'm not working anymore because I'm doing your homework for you. <laughs> Jump to number nine. What's different here is instead of it just being a plain old number, now there's an algebraic expression. Don't, don't let that confuse you. Find the value of that angle and then just set it equal to it. All right, so look, look at number nine. It says angle two is this mess right here, x plus 79 degrees. Okay, mark your base angles in the picture. That would, it's already turned like a rooftop, right? So they would be here. So what's this? Careful. 55. 55. Yeah. Use the subtraction method to find out what the measure of that vertex angle would have to be. So 180 minus 55 minus 55 leaves me with what? 70 degrees. So that expression has to equal 70, and that's what you set up and solve. X plus 79 would have to equal 70. X is negative 9. Now, you might think you can't have a negative here. You can have a negative for a value if, when plugged back in, yields a positive number. If you plug negative 9 in to X, what do we end up with? What's negative 9 plus 70? 70. So negative 9 is an okay answer. All right. You can expect a couple of problems like this on the quiz tomorrow. You can practice it by finishing up to number 12. Don't worry about from 13 on. That's more level 2 type. Okay. We're going to go to that after we practice the level 1 type. No, well, you need to do the three on the, on the top. You can tell that they're the same type of question. You definitely can tell that number 13 jumps into a different degree of difficulty.